Thank you. Hi, chaps. Uh, Scott, you must be uh, bouncing after the, the winner at the weekend for Stoke. Um, yeah, it's, um, I've just been saying that it's nice to come in, um, being involved and scoring again. Um, but yeah, it's been a bit of a tough period at club level. Um, but you know we've won we've won a game, so it's a bit more happier place and to have contributed is um, yeah it's a bit more pleasing on a personal level. So hopefully after the camp here we can um, kick on there and maybe get up the table where we should be really. Do you feel almost like you, you've saved the manager's job if, if if only for another fortnight at least? Oh no, I couldn't no because there's lads who've just played you know. 60 minutes, 70 minutes before me, who, where we could have been 4 1 up. So, no, I, I wouldn't say anything like that because it's not up to me to say that. It's not my business, you know, that's the club's business. But if it gives him more time or whatever to do what he wants, then brilliant. And I, I'm happy to do that. But uh, I can't really answer that. <laughs> In terms of your your career, you you pulled up a lot of trees, obviously at Brentford. Did you feel like you're still sort of trying to find a home and and consistency again? Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, I had two years or so at Villa, which, being honest, was terrible from my point. Um, it was <laughs> as bad as it gets, I think. But um, that that is what it is, and you've got to move on. But yeah, I just want to play consistent football now. The more I play, the more I'll score. I'll, I'll back myself to do that. So if I can get somewhere where I'm going to play regular, um, then that's great for me because, you know, when I play regular football, I tend to score goals throughout my career. So it's just about nailing a spot down now in in the team um, and scoring the goals that get us up the table or whatever it may be. Um, and then hopefully, yeah, you know, who knows going forward, maybe create a a nice little home there for myself and do well and score goals again and you know maybe get a bit more of a buzz back back around my name you know because it's since going to Villa it's gone pretty much I'll be honest um, but it is about finding a home you're right so I'm hoping I'm hoping because it's close to home as well so I'm hoping this is yeah I can find a home here uh, Derek for you good to be back in the squad again yeah uh, delighted to be back in um Last season was quite difficult. Um, I picked up a lot of injuries. Um, obviously, after I played the France game, I thought I did all right. So I was looking forward to hopefully kicking on my career with Ireland. Um, but last season, a lot of injuries kind of hindered that. So I'm happy to be in there. Um, I'm looking forward to these days training to really show what I'm capable of, really, um, and hopefully take my chance. Because um, I think there's a spot there. I just want to... Try to grab it with both hands, really. It's a good time to come in, isn't it? With, with potentially three of the back four out for this game. Do you see yourself as first and foremost centre half or a, a left back? Where do you see your best chance of getting into the team, maybe for the weekend? Um, I see myself as a centre half first and foremost is my best position, um, but I can play left back as well. Um, I played for Ireland left back, um, and I think maybe. Left back is probably the opportunity at the moment to play um, as Ender's uh, suspended. So I'm just more, I'll be delighted just to get on the pitch really and I'll play anywhere he wants me to play. Um, and I just really want to just show him that what I'm capable of doing and uh, yeah, and just trying to keep a, a spot in the squad. Has Mick indicated to you where he sees you in these two games position wise? Um, he spoke to me yesterday. He just said that he knows that I prefer playing centre half but we're a bit low on left backs and I said yeah I'm more than happy to um, play there and I stepped in left back a couple of times yesterday and centre half so um, I'm not really worried I'm just tr trying to just play as best as I can really and uh, try to show try to impress Hi lads Derek, considering the injuries at, at centre half at the moment, do you get the impression that if you impress in training over the next week or so, that you will get a nod, will get a chance over the next two games? Yeah, um, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Um, and that's all you can do. All you can do is train your best and um, try and impress the manager. And then 
try to put, uh, put something in his mind that oh, maybe he can trust me and maybe I can play. So these next few days training are massive for me and um, I'm just looking to, I'm just raring to go really. I can't wait to um, just get out there and just try my best really. Scott, you mentioned there that the, the buzz about your name has gone since Villa. Do you think maybe if you get a few goals at the international level that the buzz might start to come back about yourself again? Yeah, maybe. Um, I think I've got a long way to go because, <clears throat> you know, we had a lot of clubs and stuff after me at that time and it's just, like I say, it's not happened since. And maybe at international level, I haven't, I haven't done anything really, you know, I'll be honest. Um, so... Yeah, obviously goals change everything. Everyone's after a goal score. Everyone looks out for a goal scorer. That you know, cause goals win games at the end of the day. So maybe yeah, um, but I still think I've got a long way to go. Why hasn't it happened for you at international level? Do you think? Um, I'm not sure. Um, it's not as it. Um, we don't really. Well, we didn't really score many goals. You know and. It's, I've been limited to substitute appearances more, you know, I've, I started, I think, three games now, two of them friendlies, which the first one I should have scored and I played against Gibraltar, I had chances to score and then it's just not, not gone in yet and it's not happened and there's no getting away from that. So, you know, once you get your goal, it's... It relieves a lot of pressure, you know. You look at James Collins last last game; he comes on and scores, um, and that's brilliant for him. And and you, you can see it in him, that, you know. That's a brilliant feeling for him. And you, you know, I want that feeling, so I've got to try and somehow get that feeling. You know, I've just got to work hard, and it'll come. I'm sure. Finally, for me, is James ahead of you in the pecking order now because he scores in his last game? Or are you still confident of getting the nod, perhaps, from Mick? Oh, I think you might have to, have to manage it, that one. <laughs> um, Derek, I was just wondering, coming into such a big game like this, there's a lot of pressure obviously going into these qualifiers, but is there even more added pressure to say if you were to start at centre-back to try and build a relationship with maybe a player that you haven't played at centre-back with before? Um, I feel like... I prefer the bigger moments, really, personally. Um, so if I did get the nod, I'd be buzzing. Um, I played with John Egan before. I played with um, Longy before. Um, I know the, a lot of the players personally as well because I grew up playing with them. So um, I feel like I got a good relationship with most of the players. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable or anything like that. Um, and as I said, like I prefer the big moments. Um, for example, the France game. Um, people say you can't really get chucked into a harder game <clears throat> playing against France on your debut. So I thought I did well that day. So no, I'm just looking forward to it. And if I get the nod, I'll be buzzing because um, these are the moments you, you play football for. Um, not many people can say they play in the Euro. So that's, that's definitely another dream of mine. So yeah, I'd like to try to do it. Shane Duffy, if he doesn't make it, Obviously, his defensive uh, prowess would be something we we would be missing, but also he's one of our big goal-scoring threats. You've shown yourself so far this season with Blackburn, you can be a threat like that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I got a couple of goals so far. Um, I should have more, actually. But um, no, I'm try I tried to add that into my game because I know I've got goals in my game, so I just wanted to try to um, produce that this season. And I got a target in mind, so... No, but I'd prefer if uh, people like Scotty would score and more than defenders and uh, I think it would happen this, this next two games and yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the boys but they're, you, you don't see them in training and they're working hard and they're finishing that is quality so I know if they get the chance they'll put them away. Scott, there was a story I believe emerged that you, did you make some promise to the Stoke City Sports Scientist last week to get into the team? Um, yeah, um, I, like I hadn't been in the squads for four, five games maybe, and I hadn't been coming on at all for another four games before that. Um, and he just he named the squad or whatever, and then he pulled me to one side and just asked me what I was thinking, what I was feeling, and I you know said a few things to him, and then um, they were 
10 minutes before the bus was leaving, the manager pulled me in the office and said, you know, Jared's come over to me and said, you've said this to him, but, and I said, you know, I said, yeah, I've said that. And then he sort of slammed his hand on the table and was like, you know, I can't use the language, but, you know, get on the bus, get your gear, you're traveling. Um, and then obviously I was on the bench and then come on and scored, but yeah, I sort of had a, had a little go at him and, <laughs> it worked out because so, you, know. you did you promised to score a goal did you if you were in the squad yeah yeah I thought well I've got to try everything here <laughs> so I thought that might work you know we need a win I'll just say that and it works so you know everyone's happy just mentally when you're in the position that you've been in this season with Stoke City it must be really hard to try and get yourself motivated to, to get on the pitch and, and try and do well yeah I think I think most footballers go through in the, the career where they're not getting involved, they're left out and it's, it's, it's tough, you know, but it's been tougher for me because we haven't been winning, we haven't been scoring um, and, you know, that's the manager's choice, he, you know, he's the manager for a reason, so but you've just got to try and keep going and I mean, a couple of days here and there, you, you know, I'll probably let myself down a little bit, but it, it is hard. I will say it's really hard to deal with. I think it's one of the hardest things for me anyway. Um, I don't know about other people, but it's just, uh, it, it has an atmosphere around the, the place and, you know, one thing leads to another and the manager's trying his best to get rid of that and he has got rid of it massively. Um, it was just about getting a result. So hopefully now we can move on and everyone's got a clear head and see what we can do. I would just ask you finally as well about Aaron Connolly and his emergence this week. That must put a bit more pressure on some of you. You're, you're still a young man, Scott, but some of the older strikers in the team that, you know, you've got this young guy coming in, doing great things in the Premier League. It's big motivation for you as well, I'm sure. Yeah, look, he's, we've seen him in training. We've seen him on the TV. You know, he's a good player. Um, what we need, you know, it's maybe an old group. Well, not old, but, you know, there's a few old lads in there and, you, you need young lads coming through who are going to do it and maybe take you know the country to the next level so it's no pressure on anyone you know you just got to believe in what you do and if Aaron's to play and score you know everyone's delighted for him no one no one will think any less of anything so he, he's got to come in and, and stamp his authority on this team you know he's in senior international football now and if he does it, then brilliant to him and we'll all, we'll all be behind him. But, um, you know, he looks good in training, so it's, it's no pressure. We've just, you just got to come in and train how you'd normally train and do what you want to do and then see what the manager thinks at the end of the week. Uh, Scott, that it didn't work out at Aston Villa for you. Has that affected your confidence? And are you still kind of coming back from that, if that is the case? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I had no confidence whatsoever after about six months. Um, I was just wasn't doing things that I'd just do naturally because you're thinking about things and in the game, you're just thinking, I should go there. But then you know, you're thinking, well, oh, if I go there, I could lose it and they're going to score. And then everyone's, everyone's looking at me. But yeah, it takes a while to come back, but the only way it comes back is through playing and scoring. So I've got to do that. And then hopefully it'll come back but um, it's football I suppose isn't it it, it happens mm. I'm surprised that you're so critical of uh, your own contribution to the campaign so far because Mick has been full of praise um, for you in public and has cited the fact that you have a very handy habit of being on the pitch when Ireland score late equalisers against uh, in Denmark and Switzerland how do you assess your, your contribution so far and have you played a role in those um in those goals being scored so late, if you're not on the ball, maybe positionally or, or anything else? Um, well, if the manager thinks so, then I agree with him. Um, but <laughs> no, I, in terms of, I, I, I set myself high standards and I don't think I've hit them nowhere near for international level. So, and I expect to score goals every time I step on the pitch. So I've had two friendlies, like I say, in the Gibraltar game where I expected to score in every game and I didn't. So that, you know, I don't like that. And then um, maybe I have affected the games that have come on in and, and done whatever. And that's maybe why I'm still in the squad because um, I didn't expect to be in the squad. But um, I just think I, I expect my, my standards are high, what I expect of myself. And I expect to score. 
and I've not scored but you know if the manager's happy with my contribution and we're, and we're winning and picking up points here and there then I'm happy with that so you, you didn't so last, last question though. Though. You didn't expect to be up for this one? No, no, because I hadn't been involved at all for Stoke. We're bottom of the championship. Who would pick me? Do you know what I mean? So, I was what they ended up in it. So, <laughs> I must be doing something right for the boss. Sorry, Damien. You were okay. Thanks, Carl. Scott, just going to ask you, Dave McGoldrick found himself without a club last summer. Can you take inspiration from what he's done since, both at club and international level, as you try to create that buzz again? Well, I've got a club, so I'm all right for that point. Um, but yeah, Didzy's, what he's done is phenomenal. And I don't expect anything other than that from seeing him in training and, and obviously playing with him at Chef, Sheffield United last, last season. So everyone can take inspiration for what he's done. Um, and he's a big part of, you know, the national team as well. So it's, um, you know, hats off to him. You know, he's a top lad as well. And he deserves everything he gets. Um He's always been a fantastic player. Every time I've played against him, before he went to Sheffield United and was with our club and whatever, he's always been a very, very good player. So I, I, I didn't expect anything other than what he's done and what he's continuing to do for club and country, which and long may it continue for him, for him because I'm really happy for him because, like I said, he's a top lad. So I wish nothing but the best for him. Okay, thank you very much.